you regularly see in the circus is the high wire act. This is where a person is walking on a wire from one place to another. They have a pole in their hand because they know in order to walk straight, things have got to be balanced. The wire is so thin that if they lean too far to one side or the other, disaster awaits because if they fall, it's cataclysmic. We're living in a world out of balance. People are tilting to one side or another. They're tilting to cultural sides. They're tilting to racial sides. They're tilting to political sides. They're tilting to gender sides. They are, they're tilting and we're watching the disaster of lack of balance. So that people are not able to live their lives in a straight line because they're being pulled to one side or the other and their equilibrium becomes challenged. Christians face this challenge of balance as well. On one side, they're Christians who are so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. They will talk about the glories of the life to come while experiencing disaster in the life that is. On the other hand, there are those Christians who are so earthly minded that they are no heavenly good. They become so secularized, they become so culturized, they become so worldly that heaven has no use for them. When the balanced perspective is to be so heavenly minded that you bring good to earth because you're operating from eternity, translating it back into time. The question that I would like to speak to today is this issue of balance. Because we're all being pulled on all kinds of levels with all kinds of forces. God capsulizes this concept of balance in one verse. A very well-known verse in scripture. And in light of what's happening in our lives and what's happening in our society today, I thought it would be helpful for you and me to understand how we are to have this life of biblically based balance. And I call it the divine imperative. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8, he has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? This is what I want from you. First of all, he says, I want you to do justice. Please notice justice is something you do. It's not merely something you discuss. It's more than having a commission. It's more than having a workshop or a seminar. It's something you do. Question is, what is it? And how does it work? Let me give you the biblical definition. The Greek word for justice means that which is right. It means the prescribed right way. Biblical justice is the equitable and impartial application of the rule of God's moral law in society. Biblical justice is the equitable and impartial application of God's moral law in society. Justice always starts with what God declares a matter to be. Please don't lose sight of James chapter 4 verse 12 which says there is only one law giver and that one law giver by which right and wrong is to be determined is God. Only one law giver the Bible says. So any other rules anybody makes in order for it to be just must be consistent with the one lawgiver 
who gives all the rules. Once folk make their own rules and become their own lawgiver, unrooted in the one lawgiver who exists, you will have chaos and a whole bunch of people saying, not fair. Because they're not starting with a central base for the law. The moment in your home, everybody makes their own laws, you're going to have chaos in your home because they're going to make a law that is always in their best interest. When you, when you make rules for you, you're looking out for you because people make laws based on their interest. That's why justice has to be impartial. It can't be tied to my own interest. It has to be tied to something that is bigger than just me. God wants to be the one law giver for your life. He wants to be the one law giver for your family. He wants to be the one law giver for your church. And he wants to be the one law giver even for government. Which is why Romans 13 says that government officials are to be ministers of God based on what God says is good or evil, right and wrong. So even government officials, God says, I'm the one law giver for government. So the moment they start making laws that is not consistent with my laws, then you're going to have chaos in society because folk are going to make up their own laws. That's inconsistent with the king, his kingdom, and how he's made history to work. But he says to his people, now I want you to do justice. I want you to be equitable and impartial in the application of my laws in history. That's why justice is normally coupled in the Bible with righteousness. You'll find the two twins side by side. They are twins. Psalm 89, 14. From his throne comes justice and righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 19. To follow the Lord in righteousness and justice. Deuteronomy 32, verses 3 and 4. Righteousness and justice together. Why? Because you can't be just if you don't know what's right. You can never be just if there is not a right standard by which you're measuring the decision. So the two must always go together. And God is always right, perfectly right, never wrong about any subject matter. You cannot have legitimate freedom as it was meant to be without just boundaries. We want fairness in economics. We don't want people to cheat us. We want fairness in relationships. We want fairness. We want fairness. We want fairness. We want fairness. And God says, then you want my standard if you want fairness. And within that standard, I give you flexibility, but you can't just make up your own rules and expect order. We are the influencers. We're supposed to bring God's point of view, the conscience of the culture. Our job is not to parrot the society. We're not parakeets. That's the world telling us what to say and we mouthing it. Our job is to deliver to the society what the one lawgiver has to say about any subject. There is no subject that sits out of divine jurisdiction. None. No subject, no category. Because there's only one lawgiver. He says you do justice. But secondly, I want you to love kindness because as you're walking, see as you're walking on this tightrope, If you're only concerned about justice, you can develop a hard heart. You you can develop a a coldness about you. See, if you're only concerned about justice, then 
you, you're easy to talk about law and order, law and order, law and order, law and order. You, you want to make sure, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. And, and you broke the law, you broke the law, you broke the law. See, because you want, you want to make sure that the, the rule is being kept. You're off balance if all you got is justice. So you lean to one side, you're going to fall over. So you got to balance that pole on the tightrope of your walk. He says, I want you to love kindness. The Hebrew word for kindness, hesed, has to do with the compassion of God. The Bible says his loving kindness endures forever. God's got two sides to him. <laughs> he got, he got, he's not a one-sided God. He, don't, he doesn't just lean to justice. He balances it with mercy. A parent who's justice oriented says, what did I tell you to do? When did I tell you to do it? Why are you not obeying me? Do it because I said so. I gave you the rule. Justice. You obey the rule. That's legitimate as long as it's not off balance. He says, I want you to balance justice with loving kindness. I want the folk you are applying the rule to to also know you care about them. I want, I, I want the folk that you are applying the standard to. Yes, apply the standard. But I also want them to know that you have compassion. Justice has to be balanced. Loving kindness has to do with compassion shown in one of two ways. First of all, God's kindness is to be shown to those whom life has not been good to. In Zechariah, just a few pages over chapter 7, Zechariah says in verse 8, Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus has the Lord of hosts said, Dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion, each to his brother. Do not oppress the widow or the orphan, the stranger or the poor, and do not devise evil in your heart against one another. Don't do that. He says, remove injustice against those who are oppressed, Psalm 82, 1 to 4. What he says is those who are of the downtrodden, the poor, the oppressed. The, he says, show them mercy. I got a letter from a police officer this week, and, and the letter said, look, I don't know who he was, but one of your members came. And I, I know it's one of your members because they gave me the card. This is an act of kindness from a member of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. And they gave me the card, and it was a police officer, and he said, they brought me lunch, and they prayed for me. And all I can tell you is that that was one of the most transforming things. It was just lunch, and it was just prayer, but that changed my whole world. I got a picture of one of our members hugging the police officers. I had somebody else coming and telling me about a need, I, I guess it was a homeless person, that they reached out to and that they helped them get some food and then offered to pray for them and reaching out in just small ways, but to demonstrate compassion for people who are in situations that's not their fault. I'm not talking about irresponsibility. That's a sin. I'm talking about where life has just done them wrong because of the evil in the world, in the society. I'm talking about that child whose, whose father abandoned him and the mother has to work two jobs. I'm talking about something that they have absolutely no control over. He says, don't just say to that person, you ought to get up and tie up your own bootstraps because that's the right thing to do when they don't have boots.
Thank you.